Hey everyone, Jacob here from Painted for Combat, and today we're supporting some FDM minis. I've done a few videos in recent weeks covering my FDM printed miniatures, and second only to people wanting to know my settings, people really want to know how I support these models for printing. So today we're going to be slicing some models in Orca Slicer, and I'll be sharing my thoughts and giving an explanation to my process as we go. But fear not, I do plan to do a print settings video in the very near future. I'm just dialing in the last few settings on a couple of upcoming projects that you'll actually see on the channel. So as soon as that's done, I'll be able to share all my print settings and printer profiles with everyone. Today we'll be supporting two quite different miniatures. An organic, single piece miniature, designed for D&D in the form of this tiefling druid from Bite the Bullet, as well as this Prime Strikers gunner, kindly provided by Puppet Swar, which is a multi-part hard surface sculpt. But before we even think about support settings or placements, we first need to think about the orientation of our models, and what is the best orientation to print your pieces in. And I'm always looking out for the same two things during this process. Minimizing layer lines on our print, as well as minimizing the amount of supports on highly detailed or focal point areas of our model. For example, our striker's helmet, when sliced at the default rotation, has an overhang directly above the eye. This will need supporting, and will likely leave scarring, which we don't want on such a focal point of the model. As well as that, there will also be very visible flat layers on top of the helmet at this orientation. So for this piece, I'll rotate it somewhere in the range of 30 to 45 degrees, until the brow line is at an angle that doesn't need supports, and the ridge on top of the helmet doesn't have a flat face on top. About here looks good. This rotation will stop us needing supports for the eyes, and gives us far less flat layers on the ridge of the helmet. When it comes to multi-part minis, you need to make sure that tiny pieces like this have good bed adhesion, so I often sink ball joints into the build plate, just enough that there's a small flat surface for the first layer. For the shoulder pads, we also want some bed adhesion here, but sinking the bottom side of the model into the build plate until multiple parts are touching the bed cuts off a lot of the model due to the stepped design. However, rotating at 90 degrees so we have more contact actually results in more obvious layer lines on the curved surface. So for these specifically, I choose to go with that original orientation, and sync them just enough to have that single face for the first layer. I'll just have to make sure that there are plenty of supports in the first few layers to help with adhesion. This way the obvious layer lines are hidden by the blockier details on top of the shoulder pad. For the LMG, we have two options. This thing could easily be supported in its default rotation, but similar to the helmet, we'll have a bunch of unwanted supports on the visible edges of the gun barrel around here which will leave some scarring on those nice details. As well as that, there would also be a bunch of details on the underside of the gun that would need heavy supporting on this rotation. So instead, I'll rotate the model 90 degrees to point the gun in the air. This way all those details are crisp and support free. And the areas that are now going to get supports are mostly large flat panels that will be far easier to clean up, and won't often be visible when looking at the model front on. Plus, in this orientation there is an easy point of bed adhesion that we can sink into the build plate to get a good first layer. For the body, we can simply move it down, just enough to get full contact for the first layer, and a similar process for the back detail, just rotating to a flat face and sinking it slightly for that nice bed adhesion. And our tiefling druid will get a similar treatment. This model should be good to print in its default rotation, I just make sure to sink the model far enough that both his basing rock and foot both touch the build plate. I find that a lot of miniatures that are designed for resin printing often have ever so slightly different heights for their feet or wherever they're going to make contact with their base. This is fine, a lot of resin prints actually have bases that they'll slot into, but here we're going to want to make sure that we get a good first layer down, rather than just hoping that that foot is somehow going to magically adhere to the build plate three or four layers above the bed. As we can see here, all our models have a good first layer, with at least a little bit of material that will keep our model stuck to the build plate. This will be a great starting point for the supports that we'll add now. Before we move on to supporting these models, I would first ask that you consider supporting me. All it takes is leaving a comment below. Let me know if this video was helpful for you, or how your print settings might differ from mine, or even if you're just saying hi. Every comment helps in letting YouTube know that you like what you're watching, and makes it far more likely for the channel to grow. Alright, let's get back to it. I've quickly generated some automatic supports for reference here. You can see my full custom settings for Orca Slim Tree Supports on the left of the screen, which are dialed in for my Elegoo Neptune 3 Pro. This is both the printer and support settings that I currently use for all of my miniatures, but please note that I'm specifically using a 0.2mm nozzle and a layer height of 0.08mm, which influences a lot of these settings, so make sure to adjust yours accordingly. 
such as if you're using a 0.4mm nozzle, you'll probably want to bump the support loops down to 1, just for an example. Now, taking a look at these auto-generated supports. They'll be perfectly fine for some of our models or parts, and for others we'll want to do them entirely manually ourselves. A druid, for example, would be damn near impossible to remove from the supports in one piece. So we'll do his manually. To do this, I jump over to the objects panel so that I can change the druid's individual model settings, and change his support generation to manual. And now, with the support painting tool, I go through and paint any overhangs that will need supports. Areas that quickly join to the main model won't need much, but parts like this cloth will need a bit of extra help, so I'll add some supports on the back of this piece as well. Moving on to the staff, I add a larger chunk of supports at the very bottom, and then a few choice dots up the staff to generate supports that will hold it in place. This will just stop it from wobbling around until it joins the main model further up the print. I'll do a few checks, slicing, looking for islands or unsupported overhangs, and then touching those areas up, and slicing again. I'll do this until I'm happy with the supports, while still being confident that I'll be able to remove them later down the line. In my previous FDM guide, I mentioned using manual support objects, and if this staff were another few millimetres off the build plate, I may have also done that here. If you would like to see my process for adding these manual support objects, you can check that out in the card up here, and in the description below. Now, let's take a look at the striker. Firstly, the shoulder pads are generating an ungodly amount of unnecessary supports, so let's change these to manual as well. I'll make sure to paint in all of the underside details that were left hovering earlier, as well as adding some support to the underside of the curve. Much better. For the gun, the helmet, and the power pack, the auto supports look just fine. They're not adding unneeded supports to critical details risking scarring, nor are they reaching up the models and supporting unnecessary areas high up, increasing print time. So we'll leave all of those as automatic. For the main body, these auto supports also seem mostly okay. Hard surface minis are a little more forgiving with auto supports, so what we'll do here is just remove some of the unwanted supports from the automatic generation. This area around the hand will be hard to remove, so we'll limit this. The shoulder support is unnecessary, etc. So leaving the model on automatic generation, I'll open up the support paint tool again, but this time I'll instead paint on blockers, right clicking to paint on areas that should not generate supports highlighting all of those troublesome areas from before. And just like that we have a much cleaner support generation that should be sufficient to support the model but also be easy enough to remove post print. And now our minis are ready for the printer. I've chosen to use Elegoo's PLA here, specifically the blue, because I find that this leaves the most visible scarring when you're removing supports from miniatures. Obviously something like a grey would give you a cleaner result, but this is just so you can see where those supports disconnect and how it affects the look of the raw mini. As you can see we had one small print failure, just here where the cloak seems to have snapped away from its support near the top. This just goes to show that not everything is perfect when it comes to supporting FDM minis. Perhaps if I were to print this again I would add some more supports to the ridge of the cloak up this side here. But even so, sometimes shit just happens. While I get these supports off, here's one I prepared earlier. Same model, same settings, pretty much the same supports, but this one had no issues during print. And this mini looks great all painted up and he is absolutely ready for the table. Our striker was super easy to remove the supports for. You can see I use a lot of twisting motions to pull the support interface away from the print, gently prying it off as opposed to forceful pulling or snapping near the model. And some of these supports just fall away once the print is actually cooled down, which is always really nice. This helmet is crisp, the shoulder pads are nice and smooth, and those flat back faces of the gun are super easy to clean up with a pass of a hobby knife. Now we can quickly glue the model together, and with no additional cleanup apart from what you've seen here, these are our finished models. So, as you can see, a little bit of effort goes a long way in printing good FDM minis, taking just a few minutes to think about print orientation, 
adjusting the automatic supports or manually painting them in makes a world of difference in the final look. Our druid would have been an absolute disaster if we'd chosen to go with fully automatic supports, but other pieces are a different story. Our striker's body just needed a few tweaks to that automatic generation, and the gun didn't need any editing at all. Automatic was absolutely fine. It's just about taking a look at the model and figuring out what the best fit will be for each piece. Before you go, please do consider leaving a comment. Let me know if this video was helpful, how your print settings differ from mine, or just say hi. It all makes a world of difference. Do consider liking and subscribing to keep me popping up in your recommended videos, but most importantly, thank you so much for watching, and as always, have a good one.